and we want to continue where we left off uh, in uh, helping boys become men. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll read our text. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the message this morning. And Father, I, I thank you, Lord, for our church. We pray you bless the service this afternoon. We need your presence. We need your leadership. I pray you speak to all of our hearts and help us to make the change that need to be made. And Father, we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Notice if he, uh, if he's in chapter 6, and we'll pick up here in verse 1. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. So we, we mentioned last week, Wednesday, not to obey your parents is wrong. So the Bible says this is right. Honor thy father and mother. Not only do you say obey, but God also says to honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Why? Then it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So think about this. If you say, well, I don't know if I believe that. So you're saying, I don't believe God? I, I don't believe God's word? This is what the Bible says. It might be well with thee, and thou mayest live a long uh, on the earth. And ye father, provoke not your children wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Thank you. you may be seated. Now, whether a young man is a leader or not, he's required to be Christ-like. Uh, as woman, a woman as well, uh, Christ certainly exemplified all the characteristics, uh, characteristics of a leader. So we continue to see the qualities of Christ, which we set, uh, which He set before us, which is leadership that we are to emulate as a testimony. So this is important that we are like Christ, and it's important that we demonstrate Christ likeness. So there's a couple more thoughts I, I wrote down. First of all, obedience. And Jesus obeyed his heavenly Father perfectly and completely. Let's go back to John chapter 4, please, and verse 34. John 4 and verse 34. We're going to have a little Bible study here. And uh, notice, if you would, uh, this is the woman at the well. And in John 4 and verse 34, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. And that should be a, a young person's mindset, especially young men, to want to do God's will, God's work uh, for their life, and to please the Father. And then notice, if you would, in Matthew chapter 26, and verse uh, 39, Matthew 26, and, and verse 29. And the Bible says in uh, verse 39, let me see. Sorry about that. Um, he went a little further and fell on his faith, face and prayed, saying, My uh, oh, my Father, it, it is, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then notice also verse 42. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may, uh, may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. So there was an insatiable desire for Jesus to do the will of the Father. And uh, that's so important in our lives as adults, but also as young men. And we should be set, set a course. Don't be, um, don't be uh, double-minded. You know, uh, you're in church, you believe that what the Bible says. If you're not in church, you don't believe it. Be, uh, set your mind, set your course uh, for the glory of God. And then notice, if you would, John 5. And verse 30, John 5 and verse 30, and the Bible says here in verse 30, um, I can, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. 
and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of Father which has sent me. And then notice the same chapter, verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So this is so important. And when people get older, uh, they really start weighing this out. You know, Paul has said, I finished my course. I kept the faith. You know, these things are important. Paul's looking back over his life in the end of Second Timothy. And he's, he, he's saying that I kept the faith. You know, I run my course. You know, I, I did God's will for my life. And that's so important as you consider what, what the Bible says. And the most important thing is we do God's will. You cannot look back with the, you know, rose glasses and not rose glasses, but anyway, rose, rose glasses and think you uh, did everything perfectly. You know, I, I surely haven't. But the thing is this, can I say I, I finished my course? I kept the faith at this point I have. And uh, I praise the Lord for that. So that's it, so important. And again, he, he said in verse 36, I have a greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father had given me to finish the same works I do. Bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And then notice chapter 6 and verse 38, please. Chapter 6, verse 38. And the Bible says in verse 38, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And then notice, if you would, chapter 9 and verse 4. Chapter 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it, while it is today. While it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And then God goes on and says in verse chapter 14, verse 31. Chapter 14, verse 31. And uh, the Bible says in verse 31, But that the world may know that I, I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I arise and let us go hence. And then he says in chapter 17 and verse 4, uh, he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So Christ saw God's will for his life. And I, I say this, and you may say, uh, as a young man, I'm not even saved yet. All right, that's fine. But you ought to be determined, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to live my life for Christ. And have a mindset of doing God's will for your life. Now, I understand that your will is, is different when before you get saved. Your will is to you know, be self-centered and self-willed and so on. But the, I'm, I'm speaking about the mindset. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to do God's will for my life and set a course for your life. Don't be, you know, all over the place. Uh, set a course. Do God's will. I, I hope that makes sense. And then we see not only obedience, but devotion to the Father. And no one can read the chapter John, verse seven, uh, chapter 17, without being moved by the need of the Son to fellowship with the Heavenly Father. And this is, uh, this is essential. Again, we ought to, uh, if you're a young man, you ought to be reading some of your Bible every day. Now think of all the time you waste. Think, just think back yesterday. All the time you waste. I mean, as a young person, I wasted a lot of time. But you don't have to. Again, set a course. Do God's will. I would read a chapter a day from the book of Proverbs. Even if you don't understand it all, that's fine. I would also read, uh, get, get in the Gospel of John. Uh, first John and read so many chapters. I mean, I would just uh, do God's will in that matter. And the reason I would read John is because uh, John said at the end of the, uh, of the gospel, he said, I wrote these things that 
You might believe that Jesus is Christ by believing. You might have life through his name. So it's good for a young man to, you know, uh, set, set his course on reading the word of God. Why? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's so important that we have uh, the, the uh, opportunity to read the Word of God. Now, I didn't know any of this when I was a young person. Uh, you know, I was clueless. I, when I came to Christ, you know, I started reading my Bible after that and so on. But up to that point, I wasted a lot of my, my youth without any thoughts towards God. So he, he, he missed his father terribly and sought the father's uh, in the long nights of prayer. I'm not saying that you as a young person should read the, uh, should seek the Lord in prayer, but there's nothing wrong with saying prayers. Even as a young person, I would pray, Lord, help me to be, be drawn to you. Help me to come to Christ. Help me be saved. You know, give me that understanding, that, that thought towards God. And Christ's lowest point was being separated from the Father when he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So is Christ-like to be dependent on fellowship with the Father. And young men need to develop a mindset of de dependence on the Heavenly Father. And uh, you say, well, preach, I'm not saved. Okay, I understand that. And you may not be saved because you just don't understand the gospel. You don't understand what the Bible teaches. But let me say this. You know, if you're, if you're seeking the Lord, and the Bible tells us there's a time we have to seek the Lord with all our heart, and we'll what? Find him. And so the, the opportunity to seek the Lord with all your heart, I think, is important. So, again, there was obedience. Uh, you know, Jesus is always in the will of the Father, and there's devotion to the Father. Third of all, there's purity. And we know the Lord Jesus Christ was without sin. Uh, he was pure in his thoughts, uh, his life. He had the Father's nature. But uh, know that uh, the Father saw him. And uh, this is essential for our mindset to put in our heart and mind that thou, God, seeth me. And if you can develop a uh, a, a conscience of God seeing you. It'll help you in your thought life. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, verse 22, God says, keep thy, Paul said to Timothy, keep thyself pure. Now, Timothy was a young man. He's in mid-20s. Paul was an older Christian. And uh, yet he was reminding t uh, Timothy about the importance of pure thinking. Keep thyself pure. And this is a command from the Lord that we must obey. And may I say that too many men and women arrive at the altar uh, to be married and they're impure. Uh, physically and mentally. There was a time in our country where people were pure. But in our day and age, uh, Impurity uh, is the uh, in thing to do. But it's not with God. We want to be pure physically and mentally. So there's a, a counseling in a large Baptist church. Uh, they had interviewed over a thousand couples. And not one of those couples were pure when they got married. And uh, they went to counseling. Why? Because uh, purity prevents problems. And a lot of people have problems with who were you with and what you do. I mean, a lot of problems. And that's what a lot of our counseling was for. Now, young people, both male and females, need to be morally pure. And that's, that's very important. Say, well, you know, everyone's doing it. Doing what? And th that doesn't mean you have to do anything. You want to keep yourself. It's very important. And a lot of guys like to brag and, you know, boast of the conquering. But you don't have to be that. You don't have to be conquered. 
Amen? It causes a lot of problems, impurity. It does. And uh, I can go into that. I think you, you understand what I'm saying. So let's go back to Matthew. We see uh, the thought life. In Matthew 5, verse 28, the Bible says, But I say unto you, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So uh, that's not right. You, you've got to keep your, your mindset pure. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 15, please. Proverbs chapter 15. And notice, if you would, uh, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil and the good. So it's important that you understand that God sees everything. God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. He knows everything. And so uh, because of that, that's a good uh, preventative of lusting your heart towards others. Uh, controlling your eyes will help you control your thoughts. Amen. Now, you know, there's so many stupid thoughts uh, about this whole mindset, but people say, you know, you can look, but don't touch. I mean, what kind of thinking is that? And how would you like to be a wife of someone who has that mentality? Right. I can lust after the woman, but I can't touch. That's not going to last long. A lifetime. So young people, you want to get it in your heart and mind to keep yourself pure. You know, that's not the only thing you can think of. There's lots of things you can put your mind to and uh, do God's will in that. In Job 31 in verse 1, it says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I look, uh, why should I think upon a maid? So the idea is that, you know, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why? Because I don't want to be lustful. I don't want to, you know, allow my heart to run wild. And uh, young people, uh, young men, that's very important. Very important. So another thought here is, is words. Our Lord states that the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We must be very careful of what we think and say. So if you have wrong thoughts running rampant in your heart and mind, you know, you don't want to up speaking about it. And you say, oh, I don't I don't talk to just anyone about it. Well, who do you talk to? I well, you know, my friends and if someone starts talking like that, just excuse yourself. That's all. Say I got to run and do nothing and I, I gotta leave. <laughs> You know, I, I've, I've got things to do. I don't want to sit around here and listen to you bloviate about what you think. So words are very important. I mean, uh, things have been said before that have ignited a flame and uh, caused men to really fall down and stumble. So we've got to be careful what we say and Remember the out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Then there's reading material. Words produce pictures in the mind. A Christian needs to be carefully guarded what they see. So there's romance, romance novels. Uh, I'm going to say this. I don't mean to offend anyone. But a woman has to read those. They don't, don't have a whole lot going on in their life. You don't need to read romance novels. Well, they always have pictures on the front of them, a guy with an open shirt. And uh, I mean, it's so dumb. So you don't need a romance. You don't need to look at pornography. You know, people talk about reading pornography. I don't know what, you know, but people look at it and it's wrong. Uh, you don't need to have uh, humanistic books in your life. Why would you do that? There's a bookstore in here filled with spiritual books and uh, or passion-filled material. 
should be avoided like the plague. So it's so important, beloved, that we really keep ourselves. And these are things that can sidetrack you and take you down the wrong road. Television, movies. Psalm 101, verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. And again, you have to ask the question, would Jesus watch this? Then there's worldly music. In Psalm 40, verse 1, let's turn back there to Psalm 40, verse 1. Great verse of Scripture. And the Bible says, Psalm 40 and uh, verse 1, Blessed is he that considered the poor, I'm sorry, here in Psalm 40, uh, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined my inclined unto me, and I heard my and heard my cry. He brought me up uh, also out of uh, a horrible pit, out of miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my, in my mouth, even praise unto our God. And many see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. So the, the Bible clearly tells us uh, about what God did for us in salvation. And he put a new song. So music can corrupt morals, and morals reveal our kind of music. So, uh, and I, I understand there's probably a whole host of different music that people listen to, but we've got to realize that, you know, the, what the Bible says about um, in Ephesians 5, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody uh, in your heart to the Lord. And uh, I think that's, that's very important, beloved, that we put good music in us, you know, and uh, consider what you're listening to. You know, if you listen to um, sensual music, if you listen to music that's, you know, ungodly or whatever it may be, you know, you've got to cut that off. You've got to separate from that. So it's, it's a, we, we, we use the word muse. Our muse means not to think. Muse means to think. So when you think of an amusement park, you think about something that you don't have to think about, you know? Oh, yeah. you know, that's what people do. They, they scream and yell, and that was wild, you know? Well, anyway, um, you want to be able to think about the music. So think about the songs we sang today. Amen. You know, I mean, spiritual songs, Amen. hymns. And uh, they were, they're good songs. They reinforce what God did in our lives or what God's going to do in our lives. So a Christian desiring purity can't listen to this type of music. And, uh, you know, I, I, I go through this, whether it's country western, rock and roll, heavy metal, um, you know, hip, oh, hip hop. <laughs> it's nuts. What people think that God is helping and leading in, absolutely crazy. So, anyway, uh, so we've got to be careful with music. And then also in modesty, how we dress, how we behave. You know, modesty is just not clothing. Modesty is in our behavior, in Amen. thought. Also a mindset to glorify the Lord. And then we see goodness. Uh, all young men ought to be working at being good. You know, the Bible teaches that. And the Lord Jesus Christ could enjoy the company of sinners without compromise, his perfect adherence to God's law and his personal purity or the effectiveness of his ministry to those sinners. 
So Jesus was never affected, like he was never tempted to say, boy, I'm, I'm tempted to do this, you know, whatever the, 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 they're doing. But Jesus would get together at dinner sometimes, and he would sit with, as, as the Pharisee said, oh, he's sitting with a bunch of sinners. Well, it, it depends what your motive is. If you motive to be like them, then it was wrong. But Christ was them that way. He sought sinners out. He wanted us to even come to Christ. And so that's, uh, we ought to go around doing good, being good people, being kind, being thoughtful, being helpful. And then uh, there's also endurance. The Lord is the ultimate example of seeing a responsibility through to completion. And as a perfect God, he must have found virtually everything about life in this fallen world, deeply repulsive. I mean, how, Jesus didn't come down here and enjoy, you know, uh, just seeing how the world was. Why? He said, love not the world. Neither things that are in the world. But there must have been a balance that he had that he was in the world, but not of the world. And uh, he loved the world, yet he could not accept the way of the world. Uh, I, I tell you, Jesus came back today and to, to think about the way the world is, it's, it's out of control. It really is, in every aspect. So I, I know Jesus wouldn't be for this world. And uh, i, I got to tell you an update here. Do you know Turkey has sent uh, troops to Hamas? Palestine, and they're going to join the fight? Turkey. This is all Bible prophecy. And I, I'll tell you, if you don't know that you're saved, if you don't know that you're saved, you need to talk to me or talk to some other saint of God here that can show the, in the Word of God how to be saved. This thing is winding down. And it may, it may be sooner than what you think. And you can, you can you know, sit here and Say, no, I'm saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a, and, and, and you don't know in your heart? You know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a video, <laughs> let's get this out, on a no-so salvation. And there are men on, on YouTube that talk about salvation as that you're saved, you need to know it, and so on. But a lot of people don't know it. And they don't know it because they've never been saved. And not once do they say these things are written that believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may know that you have eternal life. And salvation is a no-so. Not a hope-so, maybe-so, it's a no-so. And uh, I'm thinking of making a videotape and putting it on YouTube about a no-so salvation. Amen. So, well, thank you, Nick. <laughs> I know we got one visitor to uh, check that out. Thank you. Um, but anyway, the, the thought here is this. Uh, you know, as it was preached this morning, the Bible says Christ became sin for us who knew no sin. And again, he, he loves the world, yet he doesn't accept the, the ways of the world. Now, uh, let me just close it out by saying there's an application here. How do we apply these great truths to our young men or our young people? And there's a line that states, plan your work and work and plan. So I'm not saying, please, I'm not trying to condemn anyone, but if you didn't write down these thoughts, you know, I would suggest very strongly you by the last two uh, sermons, <laughs> uh, last Wednesday and today, and just write down these thoughts about how, how Christ you know, uh, lived his life and how he, he uh, you know, served the Lord and how he was dedicated. He had that mindset. But, you know, the th idea is that you need to plan your work and work your plan. So I believe that if you, uh, that you have to have these attributes so you can pass them down to your sons. And these are good attributes to have. Again, it it's ought to be natural. Uh, think about salvation. You can't force it 
on people. No one gets forced onto the straight gate in a narrow way. It doesn't happen that way. But we can pray. And I, I would pray just I, I did with my children. And Liz and I prayed for them. And we asked the Lord, wherever they were, whatever they're doing, that God would deal with their hearts and save them. And then their sanctification, uh, growing to be like Jesus, and pass, uh, passing on these attributes. So th these are just th some thoughts I thought would be apropos, and um, I, I trust that uh, it was a help and a blessing to you. Now, Wednesday, I'm going to talk about, uh, preach on uh, how to have relationships. Amen. And uh, I'm not, it's not going to be a dating, <laughs> how to date someone, but it's going to, how to develop relationships. Some, some parents don't have a relationship with their children. They, they, they somehow violated it, or they cut it off, or whatever it happened. But I'm gonna show you how to have a relationship with, with people. And uh, you know, whether it be friendship, or parents, or husband and wife, whatever it may be. But I, I trust it'll be a blessing to you, and a help. So let's close the word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time. We pray, Father, you'd help us as parents to pass down our faith, help us to uh, encourage our young men to be leaders. And uh, I pray, Father, your will be done in that area. I pray that uh, some of the things that were said this afternoon uh, would be taken to heart about setting a course, about seeking to do your will, and I think that's so important. I pray that people do that. And Father, we pray that you bless this invitation. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one look, look around.